I think this is my favourite dynamic microphone. Hi, thanks for dropping in again and I'm really, really chuffed at the moment because I've just gone over a thousand subscribers. I never thought any time that a thousand people would sign up to my channel, especially as I'm only a small little microphone channel and I'm just a person who sits in his front room now having retired, making videos about microphones. That is, is, has absolutely amazed me. So uh, I'm gonna go absolutely, absolutely, I think, berserk if I reach 5,000. That is great news. Thank you to all you people who have subscribed. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Let's get to 5,000 if possible, I'll be famous. Now this microphone is, I think now, my favorite dynamic microphone. I've used microphones for a long time and I used to play in groups and things and used to sing. And the one I always used to use was the Shure SM58. The SM58 is a fantastic microphone and it really does work well, tough as nails. And you know, if you drop it, the, the top collapses, protects the capsule, you can easily replace it and off you go again. So it served me for a number of years, a long, long time. But for me and my voice, this one, has a slight edge on the SM58. With all dynamic mics, you have to make sure that your preamp is reasonable. It's no good just plugging these things into a, a camera because you're gonna get hissy audio and that's all there is to it. Now the hiss isn't coming from the microphone, it's actually coming from the preamp in your camera or the any preamp that you're using. So if you haven't got a decent preamp, you are gonna get hiss with these microphones, mainly because you do have to raise the gain quite a long way. These microphones are really very quiet and one of the criticisms that's leveled at all dynamic microphones is they haven't got the response of a, of a, of a big cardioid type microphone. They're not as crisp, they're not as detailed, etc, etc. But sometimes you don't want all that detail, especially if you're in a front room like mine. My front room is probably typical of most front rooms in this country. It's got furnishings, it's got carpets, it's got got curtains, it's got a big window over here, a lot of reflections. I've got some bare walls and the bare walls will reflect sound. Now, if you're using a big condenser mic, a large condenser, what tends to happen is the condenser is so sensitive that it's picking up all the reflected sounds and everything else that's going on around you. Like for instance, in here, if I listen really carefully, I've got um, a, a freezer going in the background, which is really, really low. A condenser can pick that up with ease. Um, there's a clock ticking underneath my TV um, and again the condenser can pick that up with ease um, and sometimes I have to angle them so that they're not uh, picking it up so much and occasionally a car goes by and the condenser rumbles away down at that bottom end. The thing about a dynamic microphone is that they're not as sensitive as a large condenser microphone so if that car goes past my house hopefully something like this won't pick it up and that's what you really need to do get rid of the external sounds and just pick up the voice as clearly as you can so having the most sensitive microphone with the most crisp top end and the most low bottom end is a fantastic and all that if you're in a studio but when you're in a normal environment like a front room or something like that or even outdoors actually you don't want something like that because it's going to pick up absolutely everything so with these microphones, with a dynamic microphone, the idea is, okay, they're not as sensitive, they're not as detailed, but actually they are geared to picking up voice. And what they do is they do reject other sounds because of their slight lack of sensitivity. They do reject an awful lot of other sounds around. And that's the beauty of a dynamic mic. And also, by the way, why I like dynamic microphones so much anyway. And you can always EQ them later in post as well if you want to, if you want a slightly more crisp sound. Now, the thing is, I'm talking about crisp sound and this one, the first time I heard it, I instantly heard that this one sounded slightly more crisp than the SM58. As soon as I heard the extra crispness that this microphone was giving me, I looked up the specs and sure enough found that this, which is really surprising for a dynamic microphone, goes from 30 hertz right up to 19 kilohertz. Now for a dynamic microphone, that's a very, very wide frequency response. 
There are two versions of this microphone. There's one that's the V7, which they say is more geared to the voice, and this one, which is the 7X, and the 7X is more geared towards instrumental sounds. And the reason that I prefer this one to the 7 is that this one has a slightly more extended frequency response, obviously, if it's being aimed at people who want to record instruments. Now, the handling noise is quite good. So I kind of feel quite confident using this when I'm out and about holding it. And sometimes when I'm using it, what I'll do is I'll hold it out of shot. So I would put it out of shot like that and just hold it and pretend it's not there. And um, in that way, you get the best of uh, both worlds. The microphone isn't seen on shot, but also because of its lack of sensitivity, it's hopefully picking up less from around the room. But um, for this, I'm showing it so you can see it. And because it's, it's rather a nice looking microphone as well. So it's got its own little protection for, from wind, from plosives. So hopefully when you're speaking closely, I'm going to lower my voice slightly. When you're speaking closely to it, it's not going to be over, um, uh, over zealous with the plosives and things like that. Um, one thing I do see sometimes with singers, especially on stage, is they put the microphone right in their face and they talk into and sing into it like this. Um, I don't do that myself. I never have done. Um, I prefer to speak over a microphone. Like that way you do avoid that horrible noise on stage, um, which people accept, I suppose, because it's live music and all that. But um, for these kinds of recordings, you really don't want that. Now, this one has a super cardioid pattern, whereas I th the SM58 is uh, a, um, a cardioid. Now, the difference is with a cardioid, most of the action is on the front and round like a big lollipop and it rejects from the, uh, the rear. So um, that's pretty good on stage. Um, if you've got monitors on stage, they generally they face you so you can hear the instruments. I, in fact, though, I would have you I used to use in-ear monitors. But if you've got monitors on stage for the other players, they will face into you from the stage. Now, that would mean with an SM58, they would need to be more central in order for the SM58 to reject um, feedback and things like that. So the pattern of this is slightly different because it's a super cardioid, not cardioid. So on the front, you've got this sound. On the side, you've got this sound. Now, the dead area for these kinds of microphones is not actually fully just on the 90 degree, but it's somewhere around there. Now, that's where the monitors would be. And what you do is you line up the monitors there and then on the back, you can get a bit of a lobe. So if I go from the lobe to the hopefully the dead spot to the side and then back to the front again, and you can see that this rejects sound quite nicely. Now, if I check out the specs and I have to put my specs on here because I can't see it my, in my old age here, um, the voice coil is actually aluminium. The magnet inside is a neodymium. Is it neodymium? Yes, I think it is. Neodymium, neodymium, neodymium. It's, it's a strong magnet, which means not only is it giving a good frequency response, but it's also going to react much better, quicker. It's got an impedance of 300 ohms, sensitivity of minus 54, which is pretty typical of a lot of, of uh, dynamic microphones. So if you are using a noisy preamp, uh, or a cheap preamp, which is very noisy, I really would suggest using something to boost the signal before the preamp. Yeah, um, those things that the, the devices that you can get do help. And a lot of people do use them quite routinely just to get a nice signal into them. I noticed that some makers actually are making dynamic microphones with, with a booster inside them. And uh, I think that's a good idea actually, because it, it opens the microphones up to an awful lot more people if they build them in. Now it sells at around 70 pounds. Um, and I think SE Electronics makes some superb microphones. They really, really do. And they're not overpriced. 70 pounds for this kind of microphone, I think is, is extremely good. When you think the Shure is roughly a little bit more, I think. And that's the sort of minimum that I would use perhaps on stage. I'm absolutely delighted that over a thousand people now subscribe to my channel. I never thought that a thousand or more would be subscribing to a, a channel that only does microphones like mine, a little mini mic channel from my front room. I think that's amazing. Thank you so much if you've already subscribed. I'm absolutely over the moon about that. If you haven't subscribed, 
please subscribe now and click the bell so that next time I make a video, you'll get a notification as well. And I hope to see you there. Cheers for now.